everyone. We wanted to tell you about a new show we are loving, the Culture Study Podcast with Anne Helen Peterson. It's a show about exploring the nooks and crannies of the culture that surrounds you. Each week, Anne and a super smart co-host answer listeners' questions about the stuff they find interesting and perplexing, like, why do clothes suck now? Is Paw Patrol copaganda or is it not that deep? And what's the deal with everyone I know getting a divorce? Like Anne's tremendously popular newsletter, the Culture Study Podcast is funny, insightful, and kind of weird. And it's guaranteed to help you become the most interesting person at parties. Listen to the Culture Study Podcast every Wednesday, wherever you get your shows. This podcast is free and it's accessible to everyone thanks to support from listeners like you. If you value this show, please consider supporting its production by donating to our home, KUOW. It only takes a minute to give and you'll be helping to support the production of this podcast. Make a donation at KUOW.org or follow the link in the show notes. And thanks. Are you sure you want to admit that? (laughs) Um, um. <laughs> that guy seems like a wizard. I watch what? a lot of shows about antiquity. Like, this is the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me. I am on a roller coaster. Text me back. Text me back. Text me back at once. Why won't you text me back? Text. Text me back. Text me back, back. Megan. Welcome to Text Me Back, a podcast from two best friends whom science has determined are most likely to make you laugh. I'm Lindy West. And I am Megan Hatcher Mays. On today's show, it's all March Madness all the time, unless it's a copyright violation to call it that. So if it is, then let's say today's show is all about going wild for sports in the third month of the year, because March Madness is upon us. But Megan, I hate sports. And what's March Madness? First of all, you don't hate sports. And March Madness, who could say really, theoretically, it's a college basketball tournament between 64 teams. And then the rounds get fun names like Sweet 16 and the Final Four, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually you become the champion. I don't really watch the games. I just like the bracket. I like to pit right. people against each other. That's what I'm about. You know what I mean? Because we love fighting. We love toxic competitiveness. Yes. However, I want to issue a grave acknowledgement that many of you may have heard this introduction and you thought, sports on my podcast? No way, Jose. I want to hear that. I want to hold space for that. I see you and I acknowledge you. However, Megan and I have a little case we'd like to make for why sports is a good TV show, actually. Sports have a narrative structure that go beyond the physicality of the sport, although that's very fun, too. Who doesn't love a satisfying dunk? Do you know what I mean? And we're going to do a whole game. We're going to do our own bracket. It's going to be called Text Me Bracket. It's going to be all of the characters that you've come to love from our lore of text me back show and we will crown one elite text me back character but there's another really important thing we're going to talk about on the show today megan what is that we're going to be reading your birthday accolades actually (gasps) i'm going to be reading your birthday accolades to your face which is kind of like a sport if you think about it so it's my birthday i totally forgot (laughs) but First, as we mentioned, March Madness got us thinking about basketball, but I don't watch college sports. <laughs> There's too many of them. So we are going to be talking about the NBA. It's a little bit more streamlined, a little bit. Mm-hmm. And Lindy, you live in an NBA household now, so you're like an expert. Yes. And I firmly believe that the NBA is the perfect gateway into the drama and narrative of the sports uh, because I've lived it. I've lived it myself. Mm-hmm. I, you're like a con- you're like a convert. Yeah. I'm a convert. I'm a guinea pig. I'm a test subject. I'm the canary <laughs> down in the mine. And I'm saying to you, cheap, 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 this will not kill you from boredom. This no. will delight you like a, a big handful of bird seed. I feel like I'm like the opposite. I grew up loving basketball. 
huge Supersonics fan in like the Gary Payton, Sean Kemp era, the 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 Rain Man and the Glove, you know, uh, the Glove. Like I went to a few playoff games back then. It was so fun. Like in like 1996, my aunt and uncle actually used to have seats that were super close to the the basket, and you could hear Gary Payton <gasps> like jawing at like the other the other team. Gary Payton, a legendary shit talker. Nothing was off limits. I, I said anything that I wanted to. I talk about your mother. I talk about your father. I talk about your kids. I talk about your, your wives. Kids. Yeah, I'll say anything to get them mad. If there was like a Hall of Fame category for greatest shit talker in the history of the NBA, Gary Payton, first round ballot, unanimous. And then and then some oil barons in Oklahoma City took my team away. <laughs> they took away the mascot, Squatch, who has like not been seen since. I hope he's doing all right. <laughs> and so then I sort of, I lost... You know, I'm like the kid in the Polar Express who stopped believing in Santa Claus. You know what I mean? <gasps> you know where Squatch went? He went to Maine to play middle school basketball with Picasso Dulap. That's a callback to an earlier episode that you should go listen to in the archives. That's right. <laughs> Screenwriter Brian Daly got him a job in a film yeah. <laughs> called Big and Harry. <laughs> That's a callback. That was really sad, Megan. And I'm sorry that that happened to you and to me and us all. Yeah. Although, obviously, the two of us stand the Seattle Storm. Even though the Sonics left, we still have a basketball team, the beautiful and stunning and extremely talented Seattle Storm. And Lindy, would you like to tell people about the award? <laughs> the yes. Storm gave you? Yes. In fact, one moment, please. <laughs> All right, just to quickly uh, sports announce what's happening here. Lindy has gotten up from her desk. She's going to the key to grab her crystal award. There is a small basketball in the center of the award, and Lindy takes it to the hole. It says, <laughs> the 2018 Inspiring Women Award. It's a crystal basketball on a mirrored base. It has an etched glass thingy it has the storm logo nice. and i got to go to the game and sit in the box with seattle's mayor jenny durkin <laughs> and then at they the brought time me down at the time at she's the not time, anymore at yeah. the time and then they brought me down on the court and then you know they didn't ask me one question about my basketball career what? and yeah and i was good at basketball megan i bet you were i, I had perfect form <laughs> but What's funny about me is that my resume is stupid. And so they had to be like, I guess this was 2018. So like I I didn't have butt news yet or shit actually, but they had to like read a thing about me. And it was like, Lindy West loves having abortions. <laughs> like, I just remember being like, uh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, you don't know uh, how many girls you inspired to go into middle school basketball. You don't know. <laughs> That's true. I was quite good at basketball. Um, however, I'm not a competitive no, girly. A so what I liked was practice and drills. I loved fundamentals. And then I didn't want to play in a game. No. I was like, this is scary. Yeah. I'm stressed. And so I didn't, I sort of, I was a choker and I sort of, um, <laughs> I sort of quit. Yeah. I just sort of petered out. <laughs> I was not good, but I was, I've been like five foot eight since I was like 10. Yeah. And so everyone's like, oh, you have to play basketball. And I am so bad at basketball. It's unbelievable. All I have from that time is a really funny picture of myself looking pissed off in my <laughs> Queen Anne Grizzlies team photo and like two <laughs> sprained fingers on each hand. So... <laughs> Thank you to uh, to my coach, Eric Lasidas, who was a columnist for the Seattle Times. He was our coach. So thank you, Coach Lasidas, for teaching me the fundamentals, I guess. Anyway, let's talk about how you got converted to NBA. I mean, so for me, yes. I've been I've been taking little steps. Like for me, I'm, be, I'm getting served a lot of really funny NBA content on TikTok where I, I spend most of my time. My husband is from Madison, Wisconsin, so he's a big fan of the Milwaukee Bucks, which means I love Giannis and Tentacupo. Oh. He's the Milwaukee Bucks power forward. What exactly was it that got you that were uh, the yeah. NBA got their hooks in you? Tell me a little bit about your favorite players. Okay, well, so Giannis is actually an important part of my story as well. So mm -hmm. my dear, sweet uh, husband, Ahame Fileje Oluo, also the composer of the music for this show, is very tall, is like six mm -hmm. foot six. And when that Michael Jordan documentary came out on um, 
Netflix, yeah. The Last Dance, which, by the mm-hmm. way, if you want an entry point into why sports are interesting, that's Ooh. like the, an incredible drama. And you, it really, it brings you into it. More dramatic than Love is Blind, more dramatic oh. than The Ultimatum. The, he, Michael Jordan is bringing the drama. The drama. Yeah, it, it, it gets its hooks in you and you can't look away. So I recommend that. But um, so Aham uh, uh, watched that and... Aham is a little neurodivergent and gets sort of hyper fixated on different things. So for many years, it was microphones mm-hmm. and Aham would sort of info dump at me about different kinds of microphone. And that that has not gone away. But when Aham watched The Last Dance, he started to think about Michael Jordan. <laughs> and, he, and then he realized in his research that he is exactly the same height and has the same wingspan as Michael Jordan, Ooh. which means his arm arms tip to tip. And he always resisted playing basketball because he's really tall. So everyone was always yeah. like, you go play basketball, just like you said. And he was always like, no, I will not be defined by my <laughs> wingspan. I'm a sensitive art boy and i'm a jazz man i'm a jazz cat but then he started thinking about michael jordan he realized he could have been a contender he could have been the greatest nba player of all time is essentially the realization so then he got fixated on basketball playing basketball and watching basketball he realized he could dunk um but unfortunately this didn't happen until he was 38 so the the dunking years are dwindling but all of a sudden basketball is the new hyper fixation in my house it's on at all times Uh uh-huh he's somehow absorbed the entire history of the nba yeah at first i'm like oh jesus christ yeah like it's it's microphones (laughs) all over again (laughs) exactly but then so Giannis antetokounmpo of the milwaukee bucks is nigerian like Uh ahamifale however his family emigrated to greece Mm -hmm. And so he was raised in Greece. So he has this like hilarious Greek accent. Like he sounds yeah. like an old Greek man. You asked me the same question last year, Eric. Okay. Uh, do you get do you get a promotion every year on your job? No, right? So every year you work is a failure. Yes or no? No. Michael Jordan played 15 years, won six championship. The other nine years was a failure? That's what you're telling me. No, I'm asking you a question. Yes or no? But I think Aham really latched onto Giannis first because mm-hmm. he was like, this is a Nigerian guy like me. Giannis is very lovable yeah. and very funny. And so then I I got hooked into Giannis and I was like, well, if I love Giannis, who else is out there in the yes. NBA waiting to delight me? And now let me say one thing. Normally, I don't think white people should play basketball. <laughs> PGA is for okay leave us alone (laughs) (laughs) however Denver Nuggets center big man Mm -hmm. Nikola Jokic is another incredible character in the NBA he is so large he is so lumbering he's so good at basketball (laughs) but it's like you see him on the court and you're like that man's about to his knees are gonna snap (laughs) in half he's gonna fall down and die but it, it is always amazing to me. Like, I feel like it's very inspiring. Like, I feel like I kind of run like Jokic runs. And so I'm like, oh, maybe I could be in the NBA. Um, but what I love about Jokic is that Jokic, he's he's not interested in basketball at all. He's like, this is my job. I just want to win games so I can return to Serbia to ride <laughs> pony. Like, he wants to get back to Serbia. And literally, like, they won the championship last year. And all the interviews, people were like, Jokic, are you excited that you won the championship? And if you're looking forward to a parade coming up in Denver. When is parade? When is parade? Thursday. No. <laughs> I need to go home. I'm a- <laughs> okay. I love it when people are passionate about the game, but I also love it when they're like, this is job. <laughs> and you know what, Megan? You know what the best part is? You don't have to watch the NBA to get all of the NBA stories. You don't have to watch the games. You don't have to do any of that. You can just watch one very special program, and it's called Inside the NBA. It's on TNT, NBA on TNT. Hosted by four best friends, <laughs> which we love. Shaq, Charles Barkley, Kenny Smith. Obviously, we know Shaq and Chuck are 
famous former basketball players. Kenny also Kenny played also. basketball. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, and then Ernie Johnson, who is a guy. <laughs> He's a guy they know. <laughs> He's a guy they know. A longtime sportscaster. And they cover uh, what happened in the games. Who cares? Uh, but they cover <laughs> they cover the tales. They cover the jokes. And they have a banter that is sweeter than honey. It's, Megan. it's unmatched. <laughs> so, okay. So there's four best friends. But really, the true beautiful dynamic is between... Charles Barkley and Shaq. Just a little brain teaser before we go to break. Don't you have to have a brain to tease some people? (laughs) These two big beefy boys are always going at it. And the the best part is that they sit opposite ends of the table. So they have to like lob insults at each other, like over Kenny and Ernie. It just makes it that much more dramatic. Because you've only been to the finals once. I I was riding on Dwayne Wade's and Kobe's coattails. It doesn't matter, Chuck. I got the same thing you got and I passed you up 10 years ago. Just letting you know. If if I'd have been riding on Kobe's coattails and Dwayne Wade's and Alonzo Mourning's too, I forgot about him. Must win for those guys. Everybody knows you're a bum. Kenny and Ernie mostly just sit there going like, oh my God, what is happening? But I think what I love about this show is it's very familial to me, like very cozy and familial to me. I think if you grew up with Black Family, which I did, Shaq and Chuck really bring this like uncles slash older cousins about to cut up at the function, at the family function energy. They're about to do, run the dozens on each other. And then they do on ostensibly what's supposed to be a basketball show. <laughs> But one of my favorite things that Chuck brings up, anytime anybody says anything about the San Antonio Spurs, he'll be like, San Antonio is a wonderful city. But <laughs> no, so we really don't need to do this again. He makes a joke every time. Well, you know, they got those big old women down in San Antonio. And they want me to apologize. That's not going to happen. What that's they want not going to apologize gonna for? Me joking about those big old women down in San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, guess, so listen, I guess uh, y'all, y'all can I guess write letters to your mama, your daddy, your <laughs> uncle. I'm not. Go- I'm gonna have fun on television. You, you, know, you know that I'm joking around. <laughs> what do they eat? <laughs> oh, oh, oh churros, <laughs> churros on the house. <laughs> Objectively, like that's hurtful, Chuck. And that's rude. And I will never stop laughing at it when he says that he when he starts talking about those big old women they got down in San Antonio. Here's his favorite thing to mention is that they can't get those cute little underwear down in San Antonio. What they wear, Chuck? They wear them big old bloomers down there, Chuck. <laughs> they can't get in them cute little panties. They wear bloomers. <laughs> we want you to look in the camera and apologize right now. Listen, <laughs> you big old women need to stop eating so much <laughs> It's so unhinged. It's so funny. Here's a little gift I have for you, Megan. I feel like as a f- famous fat writer, <laughs> I am allowed to say that that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> and we can have it. I was hoping you would. I'm going to sanction that. I don't even have to talk to the board. I think <laughs> actually what I feel like it's very fat positive actually for Chuck to acknowledge what a beautiful life it is to eat churros and wear bloomers. That's the life that I want. And it's the life that I live. <laughs> so I appreciate that. And like, one of the best things about Chuck and Shaq is that they are allies. They're yeah. really, like you said, they're there for you when it counts. Right. Yes. Bud Light had a, a famous and, and very beloved trans influencer advertise a can of Bud Light one time and then all Republicans lost their minds and were shooting Bud Light and exploding it with a gun. And then <laughs> Chuck was at some event and he goes on stage and he's like, if you're shooting your Bud Light, you're stupid. All you rednecks are assholes who don't want to drink Bud Light. Hey, I ain't worried about getting canceled. Because let me tell you something, if y'all fire me and give me all that money, I'm going to be playing golf every f***ing day. <laughs> you have a problem with trans people? You have a problem with me. Hey, and I want to say this. If you're gay, bless you. If you're transgender, bless you. And if you have a problem with that, f*** you. More powerful ally than that. I know. Than Shaq. I know. I mean, I think Shaq is re- is really similar. Shaq is not a perfect person. No, none of us are. But one of my favorite Shaq ally moments was like a year ago in the uh, women's 
college national championship. It was LSU versus Iowa. LSU's big star, Angel Reese, was kind of, was doing a lot of shit talking to Caitlin Clark, who's Iowa's big famous uh, player. And like, uh, you know, all of the white sports guys came out of the woodwork uh, to call Angel Reese, who is black, um, classless. Uh, it was all very racially coded, unsurprisingly. Caitlin Clark is white. So Keith Olbermann, who uh, used to be a sportscaster, and then he was everyone's mom's favorite MSNBC host before he left. I don't know what happened to him. He tweeted that Angel Reese was a quote, fucking idiot. And Shaq responded with, shut your dumb ass up and leave Angel Reese alone. And I said, (laughs) oh, do I stand Shaquille O'Neal now? And then it wasn't just a one-off gang. I'm so pleased to report it was not a one-off. So then Dave Portnoy, who is a rancid little turkey who runs uh, Barstool Sports, called Angel Reese a classless piece of shit, to which Shaq responded, and so is your mother. (laughs) I love him. That's king behavior. It is. When we talk about allies, this is what we're talking about. Okay. One of the things I like best about Chuck and Shaq, Megan is that they remind me of us. I know, I know. I think so too. I think there's so much about Shaq and Chuck that actually does remind me of us and is very Lindy and Megan coded, which is why I like watching the clips, why I like watching the show, because at my core, I am a narcissist. Yeah. But, you know, um, if you had to if you had to say, which one of us do you think is the Chuck and which one is the Shaq? Megan, guess what? What? We are doing the show live! That's right. I won't have a fun, fancy jacket from Saks Off Fifth, (laughs) but we will have games and laughter and some secret special friends, maybe. So get your butts over to Town Hall Seattle, Friday, March 15th at 7.30 to 9.30 p.m., Get your tickets at kuw.org slash events, or look for the link in our show notes today. Which one of us do you think is the Chuck and which one is the Shack? It's very clear to me. Go on. And I'm curious what your answer I'm to this so is. I'm so curious what what your answer is to this because I have a thought too. To me, there is no doubt that you are the Shaq and I am the Chuck. <laughs> That's what I said too. Yeah. That's what I said too. I just feel like, okay, I want to hear your reasons. I want to hear your reasons. Okay. Well, Chuck is a little bit more bewildered. Shaq is a little bit more with it. Like Shaq would never say Tave Matthews band, but Chuck Chuck says weird shit that doesn't make sense all the time. And then Shaq will be like, what are you talking about? And I feel like that's our exact dynamic, Yep, which I love. I just feel like Shaq is more pointy and Chuck is more round, if that makes sense. I just want you, I have my notes because we talked about this last week. I have my notes right here and I wrote on it, Chuck just says whatever. And yeah. I just really feel like, I feel like that's so Lindy coded. Like we once had a meeting with, with the team at KUOW about uh, the live show that's coming up. And Lindy out of nowhere just goes, I think I have that weird new toe fungus that they're talking about in the news. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody on the call was like, what the fuck? Like, what are you talking about? And that's so Chuck coded. Like Compare that to like one of my favorite Chuck <laughs> moments where he's he was on Ernie's podcast and he was telling Ernie that he has to bring his own bars of soap with him when he travels. Because I almost had a couple accidents with the soap in hotels. Uh, in what way? Well, when I was washing a part of my body, I almost had a little incident. What the heck are you talking about? <laughs> I almost had a little incident with those little bars of soap. Almost lose it. I almost lost it. And I was like, whoa, that was too close for comfort. So now I travel with my own big bars of soap. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> Lindy is Charles Barkley. <laughs> Charles Barkley is Lindy. I'm proud. It's so amazing. I thought I was a little bit more like Shaq too. I feel like Shaq can be very pointed. He's really in his like, I don't want to say like unbothered uncle era, but he's untethered from consequences now, which I love about him. That's what I aspire to always. But he's willing to like fight. Like he, he'll clap back. You're cranky tonight, man. What's I ain't up? cranky. Man, you might have a call a, a cause an electrical fire in here, man. You're trying to be funny, but I ain't laughing. I know you're not. That's right. That like you're cranky. in trouble. I ain't cranky. <laughs> I wish that there was a way for 
the audio of this moment to come through on the podcast, but we will post a photo of this on the Instagram because just the visual of it sent me to Mars <laughs> last <laughs> night when I was watching clips of Inside the NBA. Bernie Johnson, Shaq, Kenny, and Charles. If it looks a little darker, it is darker on this side of the set there's a reason for that i guess what happened was at some point over a commercial break Shaq got annoyed that the the studio lighting was very bright in his face so he walked all the way up to where the lights were with like a broom and and punched the light out so that it would stop shining in his face so they come (laughs) back for break kenny ernie and chuck are all sitting there perfectly lit Shaq is sitting <laughs> to the side in pitch blackness. You've been complaining about the light in your eyes. Oh, I have not been complaining. Yeah, you have. Okay, and y'all think it's funny. After this segment, I'm gonna bust every light up in there. <laughs> what, the light was too bright for you? Yeah. Yo, that, yo, what are you doing, Shaq? I'm breaking the light. I mean, that's 10 times already. But clearly, you don't see how black you are. You would, yeah, you, they you, just did that, but I know didn't smile. We how can you, why that. would you break a light, Shaq? Well, I felt like it. I'll break you. The only thing we see over there is your shirt. It was so funny. And I was like, yes, I would absolutely punch out a light. But by the way, by the way, even more Megan coded, the reason he punched out the light is not just because it was too bright, but because it was hot and it was making him sweat. And I was like, Shaq is a pig person just like me. Yeah. Pig it was DNA. amazing. It yep. was amazing. Yep. These four guys and Shaq and Chuck in particular are so funny. It's so worth watching the show if you want to laugh. You do not have to like basketball to enjoy the show. No. It's so good. And and Ernie and Kenny are f- incredibly valuable as well. Like we couldn't make the show without Jeannie and Brandy. That's right. <laughs> making actually making the show happen and forcing actual broadcasting to occur. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm punching out my microphone. <laughs> I'm staring at my toe fungus. <laughs> yeah, and you're you're sending me texts that say, being a wild animal must be crazy. Imagine <laughs> trying a human cultivated fruit for the first time. <laughs> Imagine it, though. Imagine. Uh, okay, uh, here's the last thing I'll say. A-, a gift that Shaq has given me, and a thing that Shaq and I have in common, which is why I have a Shaq-coded best friend, is that Shaq, <laughs> Shaq loves bloopers, and Shaq has his own blooper segment where he will show the NBA bloopers of the week, which is like, oh, someone bounces the ball off their foot, and then and then Shaq will play a sound effect that's like, doink! <laughs> <laughs> and the segment is called Shaqed and a Fool. And if there is one mission statement for this show, it's that we aim to be Shaqed and a Fool week in Always. and week out for all of you. I think we nailed it. I think we nailed it. I think we did. <laughs> Well, I hope we convinced you. If I were listening, I would be convinced because I love to laugh. Yeah. You know, like what more do you need? So give it a watch. Give it a listen. Go to Google. Type in Best of Shaq and Chuck. You will. I prom. I literally, I say this every week. The text me back guarantee is that you will love it. Yep. Lifetime text me back guarantee. Right. We just talked a lot about professional sports, which I think we proved are incredible. So we look forward to turning our Instagram account into exclusively inside the NBA clips. But right now we want to talk about something that was inspired by college sports. Uh, and here's why we thought of it. Turns out I'm actually very competitive, deeply and toxically so, but I'm bad at sports. So it's a bad outlet for my competitiveness. Lindy as you mentioned previously, you like games, but you're not competitive. So I think we've come up with the perfect solution for us both and for the Text Me Back lights. Because we love a bracket, folks. And we're going to introduce to you now, Text Me Bracket. The official Text Me Back third month of the year insanity game, <laughs> where ultimately the best animal will face off against the worst person. A traditional bracket in college basketball has 64 teams, but we're very lazy. Yes. And we don't want to do this forever. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to do this for weeks and weeks and weeks. No. So we're starting with just 16, eight of the best animals on one side and eight of the worst people on the other, all drawn from the text me back lore. If you aren't sure who 
some of these characters are, you can always go back and listen to our archives every single episode over and over. Please send them to everyone that you know also. But we will be posting these polls on Instagram and we will post an explanation of, you know, a little background on who each character is, who each animal is, who each person is. And we're going to put the matchups in the Text Me Back pod Instagram stories later today. So you can go there and vote. You decide who makes it to the next round. And then all of this will culminate in a championship matchup between a best animal and a worst person. And now maybe you're thinking, hey, surely the best animal can defeat the worst person. (laughs) We don't know that. But we don't know that. That's not exactly how this show works. I feel like this show is a beautiful mosaic of complicated, problematic faves. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that we hate the most are actually the things that we love the most. That's right. Because we love to hate. New tagline alert. <laughs> Go to our Instagram at TextMeBackPod. There's going to be a bracket there. You can fill it out yourself. You don't have to fill out a bracket. You can just vote. That's another thing about me. I freaking love voting in online March Madness derivative games. And, and, and in democracy also. Yes. Sure. Why not? All right. It's time to hear the contestants for our Text Me bracket. I will read the best animals and Lindy will read the worst people. And again, if you don't know who these people are, go to our Instagram account or listen to our archives, which you should do anyway. So fun back there. So fun. All right, here we go. Best animals. Number one, Barry, Lindy's dog. Number two, Freakaconda. Number three, the time team. Number four, Oprah, the wall rat. Number five, a dog poop in a peach pit. Number six, Mr. Darcy, a famous animal. Number seven, a raccoon who doesn't want any trouble. And number eight, a cursed Iowa angel statue that will kill you if you've had sex. Lindy, the worst people, if you please. All right, worst people. Number one, kayak dad. Mm. Number two, Dr. Gregory House. But he's a genius. Mm Mm-mm, he's worst. Number three, Lobelia Sackville Baggins. Number four, of course, it's the killer. Number five, it's the algorithm. Number six, man with teeth. Number seven, vampire boy. And of course, number eight, she too, parentheses, (laughs) dim-witted. Text me back lights head to at text me back pod on Instagram. You can fill out your own bracket. The matchups will be in our Instagram stories and then we will decide the winners and move on. And then whoever wins gets to be Lindy and my best friend. Figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to be fated, fetid? Boy, am I fetid. (laughs) Lindy, are you ready to be celebrated? Yes, Megan. (laughs) It's what I deserve. It is what you deserve. Lindy's birthday is Saturday, March 9th. It's an illustrious holy day among Lindy fans, myself included. And as a birthday gift to you and to our listeners, we have a very <sighs> special surprise that I don't I don't even know where to begin with what we're oh about my God. To, to play. I don't know. I don't know what to say. This was a special surprise birthday gift made for me by my dear husband, Aha Mayfle, who we mentioned earlier in the program. If you've listened to last week's episode, you'll know what this is. And if you haven't, we'll explain it after the clip, or you can pause right now, go listen to last week's episode, <laughs> specifically the segment about Snake of the Week and the massive new species of anaconda discovered by Will Smith <laughs> and uh, a Dutch scientist named Professor Dr. Freakbank. I cannot believe that this exists. I received it last night, and now I give it to you. Please enjoy. One time with the freak bonk. Four. I hit him two times with a freak bonk. Three bonk. Two, Dr. Bonk. Freak bonk. We are the freak. Two, two, Dr. Bonk. Bonk, bonk. Two, wiggly skin. Stay on the ones. 
always keep it bulky. We are the freak. Okay, I I can't do this anymore. I to the vault. like there's no need to have a grammy ceremony next year because we all know yeah. who's getting all the awards it's a hum for freak yeah. funk yep you know sweeping so. the grams if you didn't listen to last week's episode there was a story about this snake and we noticed that um the scientist who had reported on, on the snake is named dr freak Bonk. megan said freak Bonk, that sounds like a parliament funkadelic song and then we did a little impression <laughs> It might sound a little something like this. And then we did a little improv. Aha Mayfile, the house composer for this show, took the audio of me and Megan doing our little bits and composed a bespoke funky <laughs> tune. That is not a garage band pre-programmed funk beat. Nope. Aha Mayfile went to the, the music studio, laid down the drums, invented a guitar part and a <laughs> bass part and and added the horns and built this from the ground up and then dropped in our audio to create this musical masterpiece for my birthday i mean after that i don't know what we're gonna do next week <laughs> to try to top freak bonk i guess the show's over i guess that's it <laughs> no speaking lindy of our instagram account at text me back pod I have received some very loving DMs recently at that account. By the way, I run it. So if you think you're talking to an intern, you're not. You're talking to me. And Lindy's one wish for her birthday was for me to read compliments to her. Yeah. So, yeah. So thank you to the Text Me Backlights who sent us accolades. Listen, I have a pun. Text Me Backlights. Oh, here comes Lindy's birthday. Text me back, Alades. Here we go. This one is from M. Stearns. They write, Lindy has given me many hours of deep joy and fulfillment. My favorite thing she has offered the universe is her reading the audio versions of her own books, which I have listened to on road trips, and which probably have put me into semi-extreme danger because I am sometimes laughing too hard to be trusted with a motor vehicle. This podcast makes me feel like I can get a little dose of that happiness every week. And I do think it's even better with Megan. That's me. I and agree <laughs> that I'm better with Megan. <laughs> okay, let me get through this. Come on. Uh, in there too, because part of what I really respect about Lindy is the love, loyalty, and support that she shows the people around her. Seeing that play out in this relationship sort of live is very special. Lindy, the other thing I want you to know is that I pretty much agree with all of your opinions as shared on Instagram. <gasps> you really just get it. Thank you and happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, M. Cerns. Some of her opinions are actually bad, but the rest of this I thought was really <laughs> nice. All right, next. This is from Kat. They write, Lindy, happy birthday. You are older than you were yesterday and also older than you were a year ago. This is an achievement. You are an achievement and you achieved a thing of finishing up another book. Wow. Believe to achieve. Happy birthday, number one achieving person who achieves things. And then there's like 10 snake emojis. That one's yes! nice. I like that a yes! lot. Yes. Oh, this one's from Alice. They said, OMG, Lindy did a cameo for my birthday and she hated on It's a Wonderful Life, which gave me life. That is actually a terrible movie. This is Megan speaking, not Alice. I, <laughs> it's so bad. Anyway, she is brilliant and hilarious and gorgeous. And I derive so much pleasure from her existence. It is the first hardcore parasocial relationship I've ever had where I would legit want to be friends. So I'm glad to be a bacolyte worshiping at the church of Tave Matthews Band. Well, unfortunately, yes. Elise, you are canceled by me, but Lindy is very, very happy about this accolade. Thank you. Uncanceled, uncanceled, veto, uncanceled. <laughs> All right. Courtney says, happy birthday, Lindy. I've read each of your books and butt newses to my husband out loud in full, and no one makes him laugh harder than you. Can't oh wait to read God. your new one. I like that one because uh, last week we were accused of stifling men's joy, and Courtney has proven that, that is false. <laughs> Men can't get enough. I, I, I do want to enhance men's joy. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> okay, this is from Anne. Not to be dramatic, but Lindy's writing genuinely changed my life. As a fat woman, my life is marked by two distinctive periods, before Shrill and after Shrill. I have loved following her evolution as a human and as a writer, and now her sense of humor on the podcast is getting me through another really difficult moment in my life. In short, Lindy <gasps> is my lord and savior, and I sing her praises oh. on high. Oh. Lindy paid all these people $100 a piece. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, should we, what if we started a church? Yes! <laughs> what if we started a cult and we got we'll these cult. guys to join it? Yes! <laughs> it's a club. It's a club. It's a It's a club. It's a spirituality club. It's a spirituality club. That's right. That's all. Uh, this is the last one, which I just, uh, it's just one sentence long, but it's its a classic. Uh, this is from oh. Elena, and they say, been following Lindy since Jezebel days, and she once described Trump as an air horn with a wig on, and I still laugh about it. Truly a brilliant writer. That's nice. Thanks, Happy everyone. Birthday. That made me have a good birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow Lindy's going to have a mysterious second birthday in like three months when she needs another pick-me-up. So just stay tuned for that. But thank you for sending in the birthday accolades. <laughs> I can't stop wiggling in my chair. <laughs> you know, I really struggle. Uh, I, I, I have this like um, some kind of disorder where I, I'm not sure that I exist. And I always am like, can people see me? Do people know I like... When, when my friends get mad at me for not like texting them back or something uh text me back um i'm always like oh you noticed that <laughs> just like assume that nobody that i don't register i'm a ghost but then I, exactly that's how i feel and so maybe that's why i never shut up because i'm constantly trying to like prove that i exist <laughs> to myself but um it's really nice to hear the people that i, I do exist that's just so nice yeah. Let's just uh, let Freak Bonk take us out one more time. One time with the Freak Bonk. Four. I hit him two times with the Freak Bonk. Freak Bonk. Ooh, Dr. Bonk. Freak Bonk. We are the Freak. Do, do, Dr. Bonk. Ooh. Bonk, Bonk. Ooh, wiggly skin. Stay on the ones and always keep it bulky. We are the freak. Okay, I I can't do this anymore. I did the bump. you so much for listening to text me back if you like the show please tell your best friend about us and rate and review us it helps people find the show text me back is a production of kuow in seattle a proud member of the npr network our editor is Jeannie yandel our senior producer is brandy fullwood our mixer is jason burrows diana bowen makes our video clips and they are delightful i'm not just saying that because we're in them Go enjoy them at Text Me Back Pod on Instagram and TikTok. Our production team includes Michaela Giannotti Boyle, Amelia Peacock, Alicia Villa, Hans Twite, Brendan Sweeney, and Marshall Eisen. Our music is by Chief Aha Mefile J. Oluo. Special thanks to our perfect angel, Azolda Raftery. I'm Lindy West. And I'm Megan Hatcher Mays. See you next week. The next time you hear this voice, it'll be 42 years old. Ooh, spooky. It's going to be like, where's my creamed corn? Where's my Garmin Bosia? That's my Twin Peaks impression. It's good. <laughs> Thanks. At a time when information continues to come at us faster and faster, sometimes you need to hit pause and rewind. NPR's Throughline takes you back in time to the source of the news stories filling your feed. Find NPR's Throughline wherever you get your podcasts.